Appearing on Shark Tank is a dream for most entrepreneurs. We've seen so many innovative brands with amazing products that have come through the door seeking an investment from one of the sharks. So many products that we've never seen before that are so impressive that it's easy to see how they will take over the entire world. But that isn't the case for every startup on Shark Tank. Sometimes it's the ideas that don't seem very innovative at all that actually become the largest success stories. Ideas and products that any one of us will probably have passed on in a heartbeat but with the belief and investment of a shark, they were able to generate millions of dollars in revenue. On this episode of Startup Squared, we'll explore the top five most surprising Shark Tank success stories, and we're gonna get started right now. Number five on our list of surprising Shark Tank success stories is Tipsy Elves. The company's founders appeared on Shark Tank in 2013 and offered 10% of the company for a $100,000 investment. Essentially, they were a clothing company selling something that we never wear growing up, ugly Christmas sweaters. Just think back to when you were a kid on Christmas opening up your gifts. You get a big box from grandma and you know it's the Power Ranger action figure that you always wanted. Finally, you get all the wrapping paper off, you throw the top of the box back, and what do you find? Another damn Christmas sweater that you would never wear, not even once. But the Tipsy Elves team was onto something because the perception of ugly Christmas sweaters had changed over the years. By 2013, people were wearing them around the holidays almost as a parody on their youth. And the uglier and more out there the sweater was, the more of a hit it would be at the corporate Christmas party at work. And with their perfect market timing, Tipsy Elves hit gold. The founders, Evan Mendelson and Nick Morton, were brothers that left their jobs as a lawyer and a dentist to put all of their focus into the business. Without a doubt, more innovative and creative ideas have made their way into the Shark Tank, so it was surprising that they weren't laughed off the stage immediately. But instead, Robert Herchevec realized the potential of the business and decided to invest the $100,000. Tipsy Elves received hundreds of orders immediately after their episode aired, catapulting their success. Over the next 12 months, they generated more than $1 million in revenue. Under the guidance of Robert Herchevec, Tipsy Elves expanded their products to other major holidays and even produced sports-related apparel. This pivot blew the lid off the business, bringing more success than they ever expected. Believe it or not, Tipsy Elves ended up becoming Robert's most successful Shark Tank investment. By 2018, Tipsy Elves had over $70 million in total sales with over 2 million products sold. In 2019, they almost doubled their revenue, reaching $125 million worth of sales. Today, they have a naughty line, which customers really flock to, and a nice line that offers more traditional ugly sweaters. Tipsy Elves took advantage of a market that many didn't even know existed and made everyone love a product that they'd cringe at a decade earlier. And that's how you turn the ugly duckling into a beautiful swan. I'll be the first to admit, I laughed all the way through this pitch the first time I watched it. But on the second time, I realized something. Shit sells. The toilet paper market is worth $26 billion per year. So yeah, I guess poop just happens to be a major industry. Now I'm not sure if founder Bobby Edwards and his mom Judy was aware of this when they invented their product, but apparently the time was right for the introduction of new poop products. The Squatty Potty is a small stool that sits in front of the toilet, allowing users to put their feet up and assume the optimal position for dropping a deuce. I'm sorry, is that not politically correct? Anyway, Bobby and Judy came to the Shark tank with a product that had proven to solve a problem. Judy had been dealing with constipation for most of her life and as she aged the problem only got worse. Eventually her doctor suggested that she try squatting to help her pass stool better and voila just like that her bowels were running faster than Usain Bolt at the 2016 Olympics. The Squatty Potty was now born and when they took it on Shark Tank they hoped to raise $350,000 in exchange for 5% of the company. And that may be a little much for what is essentially a stool, no pun intended. However, they were prepared to back up their valuation. They had previously appeared on Dr. Oz showcasing the product, which led them to $1 million in sales in their first year. They also had several patents on their products, which prevented competitors from copying their design. Within the six months prior to pitching the Sharks, they had already sold over $2 million worth of products, only using online channels. 
Barbara, Robert, and Mark immediately pulled out with Barbara saying that she just didn't trust Bobby. The deal came down between Lori Grainer and Mr. Wonderful, both of whom made an offer for $350,000 in exchange for 10% of the company. Ultimately, they decided to go with Lori's offer. The publicity from the show brought them immediate revenue. Within 24 hours of the episode's airing, the Squatty Potty received over a million dollars in sales. Then they went on to make over $30 million in retail sales over the next 18 months making them one of the most successful products to ever be pitched on the show. Now that's how you create gold from a shitty situation. Before we get to the next Shark Tank surprise success, if you liked the video so far, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. And now that that's out the way, let's get back to business. Third most unexpected success story from Shark Tank is Groove Books. Let's face it, there's really nothing that innovative about books. But even with the digitization of the book industry, there's still one type of book that we all appreciate, photo books. While it's nice to be able to just whip out your smartphone and view your favorite photos, there's nothing that can replace a physical picture book that someone can flip through to relive an event or a memorable moment. And while every other photo company was focusing on the digital, Groove Books merged digital with the physical to create a business that will go far beyond expectation. The company's founders had a really exciting idea. Users paid $3.99 a month, and they would have the option to print any photo they wanted and have them add it to a monthly photo album. The 4x6 book, sent out on a monthly basis could hold up to 100 photos, allowing users to snap pictures all month on their phone and have them transferred into a physical memory. And it didn't take long for the sharks to bite. Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary combined forces, offering $150,000 for 80% of the licensing rights. At the time of the pitch, the company had 18,000 subscribers. In order to break even, they would need around 30,000 subscribers. Shortly after their Shark Tank appearance, they hit 500,000 paid subscribers. And by the end of 2014, they had over 1 million downloads and 200 million photo uploads. The founders hoped to get the investment in exchange for an equity stake, but since the Sharks only purchased 80% of the licensing rights, the founders were able to still earn the full profit on the entire subscription business. In November of 2014, just a year after the founder's Shark Tank appearance, Groovebooks was acquired by Shutterfly for $14.5 million, making it the first idea pitched to Shark Tank that was acquired by a publicly traded company. Now that's what you call picture perfect. At number two, we have Reader Rest. Now we've seen some pretty cool eyeglass companies launch and make waves in the market over the last few years. Warby Parker, for instance, launched in only 2010, moving the entire eyeglass purchasing process online, and they went on to earn around $250 million in annual revenue by 2019. So it's not that eyeglasses don't sell, but we definitely never think of eyeglass accessories as an exciting and game-changing sector. But when founder Rick Hopper brought the Reader Rest to Shark Tank, he proved that a small accessory could rake in millions of dollars in revenue. Rick Hopper, who once worked as a Home Depot supervisor, wasn't new to inventing things. While working as a window and door installer, he invented several simple tools to make the process easier. Eventually, he started a company to sell these tools, giving him the income he needed to leave his nine to five job. In 2010, Rick sold his share of the company and started working on something new, the Reader Rest. In 2011, he began manufacturing the device, a small accessory that clips onto your shirt with a magnet to hold your glasses in place while they are not in use. Exciting, right? Maybe it doesn't seem so exciting to you, but if you're somebody who wears glasses every day, you can probably see the huge benefit that this small product can offer. Before going on Shark Tank, Rick attended several trade shows, and within months, he had sold over 65,000 units. Believe it or not, Rick had never even heard of the show Shark Tank before his friends were telling him that he should apply. But after sending in an application during casting call, he received correspondence from producers saying that they wanted him on the show. When he came into the Shark Tank, Rick tripped and fell, rolling on the ground in what seemed like a horrible accident. But it was all planned. When he got back up, his glasses were still attached to his shirt safe and sound an amazing way to showcase the durability and value of the product. Now that's how you make an impression before you ever even say a word. His goal was to raise $150,000 for 15% of the business, which would help him with manufacturing and distribution. Unfortunately, only a few sharks believed in the product. Robert Herchevec thought that it would take way too much effort for the business to see success. Damon John thought that the market was way too small, and Mr. Wonderful thought that the valuation was just ridiculous. 
But Lori, queen of QVC, thought that it could have some appeal on home shopping television, and she offered the $150,000 in exchange for a whopping 65% of the company. And while that probably seems pretty unfair, she promised Rick that she would make him a millionaire. After hearing her offer, Mark Cuban quickly backed out. With the rest of the sharks completely out, Rick only had Lori's offer to entertain, which valued his business at only a fraction of what he thought it was worth. But in the end, he took the deal, and it proved to be one of the best decisions that he could have made. Lori helped Rick secure manufacturing, and then she hosted the product on QVC. It only took five minutes for Rita Rest to completely sell out of their entire supply, generating $100,000 in sales. Since then, Rita Rest has become the number one selling magnetic eyeglass holder with over 3 million units sold worldwide. And the company is bringing over $5 million per year in revenue. Lori, the majority owner, obviously made a ton of money from the deal, but in parallel, she kept her promise of turning Rick into a millionaire. Even with bifocals, I couldn't see that success coming. Coming in at number one for the most surprising Shark Tank success stories is Bomba. And what do they sell? Socks. Yeah, I know, we wear socks every single day. Everybody wears socks. Ultimately, it's big business, but exciting? Not really. The apparel industry is already just so saturated, and it's not like we're talking about designer jeans, leather jackets, or sneakers. They're just socks. Think of the last time you visited Walmart. Did you rush through the door and go straight to the underwear and socks section excited to see when new items came in? Probably not. So what really made Bombas special? Well, maybe their socks were a tad bit more comfortable than the average sock, but it was really their social cause that cemented their business model. Because actually, statistics show that socks are the most needed clothing items among homeless individuals, followed by underwear and t-shirts. And with more than 150 million and homeless people in America, the lack of socks and undergarments was a problem that the founders knew needed to be addressed. They had a really great idea. For every pair of socks purchased, they donated an item to the homeless. This provides buyers with dual incentives since they get a great pair of socks, but can also help serve others who may not be as fortunate to be able to buy a pair of socks on a whim. Consumers really connected with their mission and they supported the idea. First, founders Randy Goldberg and David Heath launched a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, raising money from the public in exchange for incentives. The crowdfunding campaign allowed them to raise $145,000 while maintaining full ownership over the brand. They received another $1 million in funding a year later through a family and friends round. Then, in September of 2014, they presented their brand on Shark Tank. Having already proved their product through crowdfunding, the owners hoped to raise $200,000 for 5%, giving them a valuation of $4 million. They didn't quite get the deal they hoped for though, at least not at the terms that they asked for. But they did get an investment from the shark that could probably help them most in the fashion and apparel industry, Damon John. He offered $200,000 in exchange for 17.5%, which they readily accepted. Today, Bombas has pivoted into other products as well, like underwear, t-shirts, and slippers. And this has helped explode them into one of Shark Tank's most successful investments. In 2018, the company exceeded $100 million in revenue. And by April 2020, they had donated over 35 million pairs of socks to the homeless. Although Bombas serves a great cause, they are still a for-profit company. And something as simple as socks, launch these founders into the Millionaires Club. And that's how you come up with an awesome business idea that would knock an investor's socks off. And that's all for our most surprising Shark Tank success stories. Which one of these were you most surprised by? Tell us about it down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care and keep creating amazing shit.